Father, we thank you for this moment. Father, speak to your people, oh God, in this moment. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you so much for bringing the presents. One of these days when we come, we just have to do this and go home. You know, um, do I have to preach? Do I have to do this? You know, sometimes when the presence of the Lord is so mighty in a place, we, we want to continue in that. You know, um, we thank you, Minister. Sonny, thank you to the children. Where are they? Oh, thank you so much. And um, for your lovely attires this morning. Oh, thank you. Mother's Day. Someone said, aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> they know we are coming. You know, it's aha. Uh -huh. It's like the women, you can expect to hear all kinds of things today. But you know, Mother's Day or Mothering Sunday, we keep saying Mother's Day, so sometimes Mothering Sunday is a special day. You know, in, 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 in the history of the United Kingdom, I don't know where, what happens in the other parts of the world, but there's that particular day, if you don't order flowers maybe days before, you go to the florist and they're running out of flowers. You know, it, it happens on Mother's Day. Sometimes there's traffic jam on Mother's Day. Um, restaurants, Pastor is telling me now, tell me now. Pastor, you tell me. <laughs> Pastor says restaurants are full. In fact, if you didn't book before today, if you went to any restaurant, you have to queue. So the Pastor said because of that, the men cook for your husband, um, the men cook for your wives today. But restaurants will be full. What else, Pastor? <laughs> we are the last act of creation. You know, you reserve the... Hallelujah. We are the icing on the cake. You know, you know that you, you reserve... The Lord, when he created everything, he left the woman. He said, this one, my last act. It's got to be beautiful. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But not only that, even before he made us, he had to make a whole show out of it. A whole show. He made the man sleep, take out the rib, now all of that, and presented the ass to the man. The man looked at the woman and he shook and said, my goodness, I have not seen anything like this. Amen. Hallelujah. The man has seen all kinds of things through creation, but when he saw the woman, my goodness. Hallelujah. We are blessed. Woman, Listen to me. No matter what people might say to you, you are blessed. You are highly favored. Amen. Of the Lord. Amen. God has put inside you things that, you know, sometimes you yourself are surprised at what you are able to do. You know why? Because God created us and said we are helpers. We are the helpers of this earth. Amen. And you know, when God says you are helper. The word that he used there is Eza, E-Z-E-R. Now, when you read scripture and you come across anywhere where it says, the Lord is my helper in scripture, it is the same word Eza that is used of God. So you know what? God looked at us and put a little bit of himself in us. That is why we can do what we do. That is why we can juggle the way we juggle. Amen. It is not by your power or by your might, but it is the way the Lord has made you. So don't underrate yourself. Amen. Hallelujah. And this morning, our text, I've said this morning that, you know, as uh, Eunice said, every girl is a mother. Every young lady is a mother. Because the moment you hit the earth and you are called a girl, you are already a mother. Amen. Our scripture reading this morning is from John Chapter 19, verse 25 to 27. Amen. 
it says, Now there stood by the cross of Jesus his mother, and his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. Note that there are four women being talked about. There stood by the cross of Jesus his mother, his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Clopas, and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus therefore saw his mother and the disciple whom he loved standing by, he said to his mother, Woman, behold your son. Then he said to the disciple, Behold your mother. And from that hour, that disciple took her to his own home. <clears throat> what a beautiful picture of Jesus' relationship with his mother. The King of Kings, the Messiah, the Lord of all the earth, came through a woman. It is not surprising that Jesus came through a woman. Well, I, I, you know, I have to stop because I, I could keep going on and on about this woman thing. Let me just stop and just get on to my point. <laughs> you know, the relationship between Jesus and his mother, beautiful. Um, but you know, when you read this account, you, you, when you start reading the account of Jesus' crucifixion, it starts with him being arrested, him being taken to the high priest, him being taken to Pilate, him being, you know, carrying a cross, falling down, people lifting his cross, you know, on the way to Golgotha. Now, you read it, you read it and you're coming, you're reading and you're reading and you're reading and you feel the heat and you feel the intensity of what is happening. If you have watched the Passion of the Christ, oh my goodness, the graphic images that you see, it's so intense that you would have thought that such information such as this doesn't really, it's not that important for what is going on. We are talking about soldiers who are blaspheming, um, all of that going on. The, the, the cross is being made ready. He's going to be put there. And it, all of a sudden, they drop this information of a woman who stands there and says, it's Jesus' mother. What, what importance is it to this whole thing? It is important. And the fact that this thing is there, right there, and the writer just homes in on that before he continues. He goes on and then continues and to the point where Jesus is now pierced and he says it is finished. Why is this there? I believe it is so important that we stop as the writer also stops at this point. That we also stop and look at this text. It's there because it's so important to be recorded. And it's about Mary, the mother of Jesus, and the fact that she stood. In Matthew's account, it talks about the fact that the disciples all forsook him. Matthew chapter 26 verse 56 talks about the fact that the, then all the disciples forsook him and fled. Many people that thrown to the place forsook Jesus, even his disciples, and fled. And yet they stood at the cross of Jesus, even though everyone had gone. Mary, the mother of Jesus, and these three other women. Think about it. Your child, you have received such great promises about this child. Promised to be the Messiah. The great Messiah. And so now the disciples have fled because the whole thing is confusing to them. That this great man that they have been walking with now is going to be hanging on the cross. Now is hanging there. They couldn't reconcile it. The Bible says some of them, they left and they went about their fishing again. But in the midst of this, there are four women who stood. I believe that when the disciples fl fled, they went to go about their duties. Some of them, they went and said, you know what, I'm get my net and just go and do what I, you know what to do. They stood there, why? Because they still believed in Jesus. They still believed in Jesus. Mary still believed in his son. Many times we may go through situations where do we still stand when it looks like complete the opposite of what God has promised? Can we still stand, stand as women and still believe and still trust him? They stood there 
because of their devotion to Christ. But notice that there are three other women, four women standing. With no disrespect to the men. John was there. But all of but four women standing. Four women standing, is, they are standing because as usual with women, there is something about women in the way we connect with one another. I believe that the women were there so that they would connect with one another. They would take from each other strength to stay at the cross of Christ. The synergy that occurs when women get together, we are able to encourage one another. The love of a woman. It is tenacious. It is strong. The love of a mother. That is why they were last at the cross and they were again first at the resurrection. And more than once when you look around and, uh, about us, I think that more than once it is a woman, a mother's prayers, a mother's lifestyle, a mother's walk is what has kept us. And we are sitting here today. The story is told of John Newton, who sang Amazing Grace, who wrote Amazing Grace. The account talks about the fact that he followed an ungodly lifestyle, but he had a mother who was godly. So one day in the ship, he was sailing and he remembered, he was just recollecting about his mother. And all of a sudden, the moment he thought about his mother, the first thing that came to his mind is, let me go and look for a Bible in the ship. He found a book called Imitations of Christ by a man called Kempis. And as he read that book, he gave his life to Christ. The seeds that you are sowing, maybe sometimes you sow the seed and you think they haven't heard. One day, they will always come back to it. Amen. If your children think about you for a moment, or you are asked, your children are asked, Give me one or two words about your mother. The thing that they will say is what they know about you. I pray that it will be good. You know, may they say that you are a godly woman. May they say that you are a woman of prayer. May they say that you are a woman of faith. And that it is your faith that keeps carrying them. Amen. Many times, you know, when there's, you know, sp especially sportsmen, when they have done something great and they're being rewarded or whatever, and they ask them, is there anybody in your life you want to acknowledge at this time? You know what they say? I want to thank my mother. You know, pastor does it better. I want to thank my mom. Many times, you know, it isn't that the fathers were, for some of them, the fathers was, were not there. But mine was us TBC. Amen. We will be fathers who will be there. Amen. We will take on our task. Amen. Amen. Sometimes, you know, it is just the mother's love. It is so, it, it, you know, it, it's so strong that it's the thing that they all say. They open their mouth. It's their mom. Amen. Amen. May your influence outlive you. Because, you see, time will not permit me to go on. John Newton brought somebody else to Christ called um, Thomas Scott. He wrote the commentary. Thomas Scott also brought someone else to Christ called Cowper. He wrote a hymn called, There is a fountain filled with blood drawn from Emmanuel's veins. And through Cowper, Will, William Wilberforce also became a Christian. He is the one that stood and with the abolition of the, of the slave, slave trade in England. So the powerful chain, it means that what you do today will outlive you. Amen. Don't think that what you are doing today is only for the now, it is for the future. And so if you, we parent properly, God, the seeds will, will outlive us and it will multiply as this account that I've given. The legacy of godly parenting. A kingdom-minded mother looks to the future of her children. It is not just about providing the practical things of life and shelter and care and food. It goes beyond that. It is about the soul of your child. It is far reaching than we sometimes even stop to think about. I was saying to this in this morning's service, and I was looking at my own family tree, just tracing it from the root of my mother only. 
And I was, I was just, had, it, 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 uh, I was baffled. I hadn't spent the time to do it properly. But this morning when I was doing it, I thought, wow. My mother was raised by my, my, my grandfather, who was God-fearing. And when I look at my, from my mother to our siblings, to my siblings, six siblings that I have, every one of them have given their lives to Christ. And then I looked at the siblings, and I looked at every one of us and our children, and I found that every one of us and our children as well have all come to know the Lord. So I think to myself, there is the next level of the pyramid. And that is, this is my children, our daughters and their cousins. That if we did a good job, that they will continue. And it's like, a, you know, the, the, the sometimes this business thing that people, and I think people do. What's it called? A pyramid, pyramid business thing. They say, connect with someone and then invite four people to join you. When that, you got uh, another four go and find another four each, it multiplies. You know what? We jump at the thing. I don't know whether those things are, but you know what? It works. When, it, when God says, I want a godly seed, this is what God is talking about. And you know why he says in his word here? He says, Malachi 2.15, Didn't the Lord make you one with your wife? Listen, fathers, in body and spirit you are his. And what does he want? Godly children from your union. It means that as you continue to stick together, he will get a godly uh, seed from you. So he said, well, guard your heart. Remain loyal to the wife of your youth. This pyramid thing that God wants from us, look at it like that kind of pyramid that we, we know and understand. If the two of you are together like that, you are going to raise for God a godly seed. They are going to continue to do that. Their children will continue to do that. And so as we go on and on and on, we raise, that is how I believe we can raise a godly seed after ourselves. Mother, what is the temperature in your home? Are you the kind of mother where when mother is not happy, everything is chaos in the home? If mom is not happy, everybody has to suffer for it. Abraham Lincoln said, a house divided against itself will not stand. But there stood by the cross of Jesus, his mother. It is there for all generations to read that record and replicate, to stand for our children. What does it mean to stand for your children? Number one, love your child. The way to stand for your children is to love your child. Titus 2, Paul admonishes Timothy and says, teach the younger women. Teach them how to love their husbands and teach them how to love their children. And you think for a minute that that, is, that seems to be a statement that it doesn't need to be made. I mean, you love your child anyway. I mean, when you have a child, who would have a child and not love them? But you know what? It, we, we have to learn how to love. The reason why Timothy is admonished to teach the younger women to love their children is that we are not to take it to chance. We, we, you can easily take it for granted. You can easily expect and think that your child just knows that you love them anyway. And that is the way we do it. We, we men, we think that the, when the husband says, I love you, you, do, you say, but I don't see your love. So he says, ah, if I didn't love you, would I have married you in the first place? It's the thing that we say all the time. It's the same thing. Your child, you love them. It's, it's, it's unconditional. But you know what? We need to take note of it. We need for it to, to sink in. We need to take caution of it. We need to be intentional about our love. We need to build stronger relationships with our children. Loving our children, I believe, is the way to reach their heart. It is the way. that There is no other way to reach their heart than for them to know that you love them. Tony Evans said this, rules minus re relationship or rules without relationship is rebellion. It means that you can't continue to give your child rules and rules and rules. They won't listen to you. If they know that you don't really care for them or you are not there for them, they won't listen. Love is a key element. Love gives us the permission to enter their hearts. Love unlocks the heart toward their hearts towards us. The nature of the love, a mother's love, 
it is unconditional in nature. It doesn't mean that you don't correct your child when they are wrong. Discipline them when they are wrong. Point it to them and discipline them. Draw the line and draw the boundaries. But you know what? They need to know that you love them so much that even when you are angry and you've scolded them, you've done all that you do to them, they still know that you love them. That kind of love is unconditional. But you know what? Sometimes when you are parenting and you are facing challenges sometimes, children whose behavior sometimes can be a little bit challenging, it makes parenting challenging. But you know what? Young people sometimes also make things easy for us <laughs> in our parenting. But you know what? The thing about it is that there is joy in parenting. So much joy in parenting. God will cause us to see the fruit of our labor. Amen. God will cause us. You will so bless our children that we will know of the truth that we have. The Lord has led us in doing a good work. Amen. No two ways about it. And that should be our prayer. But sometimes when it is challenging, sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's great. It's cool. Have a witness. That sometimes it's not. Yeah. Sometimes, you know, God has so blessed us that sometimes some of our children are cool and they understand that they cooperate. But it's not always so. But you know what? Look at the, the story of the prodigal son. We always talk about the prodigal son uh, and the father. But you know, in that um, setting, you can also see an example of a family. A family <laughs> where two boys born of the same mother and the father have completely opposite characters. What do you do when you have a compliant son, like the elder son of the, of the father? Father, when the younger son repented and came back, the other one said, Father, I have slaved for you. I have never disobeyed your orders. That is a compliant child who stays at home, doesn't want trouble. If you tell them to sleep, they will sleep. Wake up, they will wake up. No trouble. Amen. Hallelujah. Are you the one? Well, you know. That was Minister Clarion. Do you believe he's a compliant or a strong-willed one? Strong-willed. And very strong. <laughs> Mama Pat, he says you know him better. Anyway. But you know what? Some also come like the, the younger son. Reckless, careless. I want it now. Give me the reasons why I shouldn't have it now. Goes away. But you know, the father loves them all the same. Sometimes we too fall into that danger. But that story should tell us how we as parents need to, to behave. Sometimes we feel that it's easy to love the compliant child because they don't give us trouble. But you know, sometimes we also feel that, oh, when the child is doing well in school, oh, you love them. And maybe the one that is not so academically up there, we do them anyhow. You have not discovered the secret. Not all of them may be, a, pastor preached it at length, so I don't even have to go there. But you need to just identify where they are blessed and where their giftings are. And the Lord expects us to love them all the same like that father did. That father is, typifies God for us. He is extravagant in his love towards the two of them. In the same way, we've got to be extravagant in our love towards the compliant one, towards the strong-willed one towards a semi-strong-willed or very strong will, however they come. But if you are a parent like me who has more than one, you know that they are completely different. And we need to just ask God for the wisdom to handle them all. Kingdom-minded mother, don't give up. You know what? When Mary, she stood at the cross, weary but you know what it is great because a few days after the same person who stood at the cross in that intense pain saw the resurrection of Jesus and so in the same way we might see some pain right now but don't give up stand because very soon there is coming a resurrection amen that son or that daughter is coming but I was saying in the first of never brand them rebellious. Never use that word on them because that is not what they are. Amen. 
That is not what they are at all. They may have been going through challenges, but stay there with them. This kind of love is selfless. It is selfless because you know what? A mother can cook the food and all of that and find that, oh, maybe a visitor came, so she just sacrificed the food. The children come and they ask, Mom, have you eaten? Oh, yes, I've eaten. Because if you say you've not eaten, the, the child will probably give you that. So, so you make sure that they don't forego their food. They'll say, oh, I've eaten. The sacrifice of motherhood. Some of you have sacrificed, especially if you're single-handedly raising your child. The Lord will bless you and bless your children abundantly. Amen. Because you are doing a double job and God will, is looking at you. And he will give you the grace and the strength to be able to do it and to raise your children. A selfless mother doesn't sleep too deeply in the night because her, one of her ears, especially when he has young children, one of her, there's something inside you that is still awake. And the moment you hear the slightest noise, they are up. You turn to the left or right, whichever way he sleeps. And then you get up, you get up, you go, you do administer the medicine and come back. Somebody is still sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> They did not see. You got up, did all you did, and came back. You've done God done, done anyway. <laughs> that is why we are women. But sometimes this kind of love is looked at as overprotective. But that is the nature of this love. Because a mother's love is that kind of the side of us which, which is for looking after our children's safety and security. So they can go on and on a bit. I, can, I sometimes go on. My children will look at me and say, ah, it's too much. I'm fine. But that is a mother. Jesus' mother stood. There stood by the cross of Jesus, Mary, his mother. How do you love your child? You love your children unconditionally, sacrificially. Second, pray for your child. To stand with your child, continue to pray for your child. The moment God gives you a child, every mother is an intercessor. Every mother. Because you know what? You will, con you will pray. From the day you have a baby, you will pray until uh, Jesus takes you home. <laughs> that is it. Because you see, you will pray for your children. Whatever stage they are in their life, they're being toddlers, then they're going to primary school, you pray. Then they, you, they, you pray. You keep praying. Then when they leave home, you are praying. You are praying for them, for their husbands. You are praying for them as, as wives that they will go and be good wives and husbands. Then they start having children. And then you start praying for your grandchildren. <laughs> so the moment God calls you a woman, you are an intercessor. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Every woman. And you have got inside of you. God has placed a mechanism in you which can pray, pray without getting tired. Pushing until something happens in the life of your children. If your kids, if your children can rely on you to pray, I'm telling you, where they will go, just pray. And sometimes, you know, at sometimes at home, I always say to the kids that some of the little things you hear me talk about, who put the plate there? Who put this here? Why, 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 why is the plate dried up in your bedroom? Why, why is this and that and that? Why is your room dirty? Why I talk like that? When it comes to the deeper things, I don't even talk. I don't, I don't go there. I just, I don't even have to talk. I just get on my knees. The most, the deeper things about their lives. I don't talk and quarrel with them and cha 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 to them. No, those things is for the knees to do. Because sometimes they can drive you. If you're not careful, you will open your mouth. You say the enemy takes it. Watch the heritage of a praying mother, if you know one. Just watch that mother and watch their offspring. you see them just going. No one contend, can contend with a woman who prays for their children, not even the devil. Charles Haddon Spurgeon says, I cannot tell you how much I owe the solemn word and prayer of my good mother. Abraham Lincoln if you get the opportunity to watch that film, Lincoln, you will cry. He said, I remember my mother's prayers and they have always followed me. They have clung to me all my life. 
all that I am or hope to be, I owe it to my angel mother. But Gas tells mothers today, he says, do not stop praying because God listens when mothers pray. That is Bob Gass's word for us for today. Pray like Hannah. He's, Hannah said, for this child I prayed to the Lord and he granted my petition. That is Hannah's words. For this child I prayed to the Lord and he granted my petition. For each and every one of your children, pray to the Lord for their success for open doors, for God's blessing, that they will not fall into wrong hands and wrong company. And you will say like Hannah, for this child I prayed to the Lord and he has granted my petition. What do you do? If one of your children, your child seems not to understand you and decides to go the opposite way, you know that you have given them the tools. Yesterday we Talking about give the children the tools. But you know what? Sometimes we feel that you, we can fix everything. And there comes a point in their lives they have to make their own choices and their own decisions. You give them the tools of a godly foundation. But you know, sometimes you have given them that and they still decide I want to go the opposite way. What do you do as a parent? Don't open your mouth and give them negative words. Tell them where they are going is dangerous. Tell them, tell them through God's word and all of that. But you know what you need to do? Pray, pray, pray. Lamentations 2.19 says, Arise, cry out in the night at the beginning of the watches. Pour out your heart like water. It says when you pour out your heart, it's like water being poured before the face of the Lord. Lift your hands towards him for the life of your young children are you standing for your children through prayer can your children confidently say that they know that they have a mother and a father it's because today is mother's day we are focusing on the mothers but fathers do pray for their children too can our children confidently say that they know that they have a father and a mother who pray for them constantly they're stood by the cross of jesus his mother. What does it mean to stand with your child? Instruct your child in the ways of the Lord. Godly counsel, values, honesty, and truth. Godly values. Let's instill them in our children. When we do that, we can look at the child and we, we will know where this child is coming from. Like Timothy, um, Paul looked at Timothy and knew where he was coming from. He knew he was coming from the home of Eunice and Lois. The spark was started by Lois, the grandmother. Eunice took it over and Timothy took it on. And on it goes. Amen. Amen. Instruct. Godly instruction like Susan Wesley for his 19 children. Susan was asked by one of his children, what is your definition of sin? Listen to this. If such a woman is training you, you know how you will come out. Whatever weakens your reasoning, this is a definition of sin, whatever re weakens your reasoning, impairs the tenderness of your conscience, obscures your sense of God, or takes away your relish for spiritual things. In short, if anything increases the authority and power of the flesh over the spirit, then that to you becomes sin, however good it may be in itself. That is the way to define sin in our age today. This is what she gave many years ago. But if we are to define sin in our age today, we, sin will be clear. In the age that we live in, we are compromising so much that sin is not sin anymore. But go back the years. Let's use the same standard. And if we use this standard, we know. Nobody will tell you when that thing is sin. You just know. It says it, is for, it, it becomes sin to you. Therefore, the mother's role is a spiritual role. More spiritual than it is physical. I want you to consider that. And I believe that if that is the case, then you and I need to equip ourselves. We need to grow up. We need to step up wherever we are in our spiritual walk. Wherever each one of us, I need to step up. We all need to step up. So that we can take on this role and do it properly. 
shift from some mentalities and fickle mindedness. Let's you know, our children see as the things that we do, let's shift from it. Some idleness and some busyness, wrong, wrong reason. Let me not just go on, but you know what I mean. Let's shift from those things and allow the Lord to do a deep work in us so that we will impact our children for eternity. How do we stand for our children? Watch over their affairs. Everything about them. Let's be interested in every season of their lives. Let's be interested. Let's ask the right questions. The Bible says the woman, the Proverbs woman, she watches over the affairs of a household. And watching over their affairs goes beyond providing food and security. It's talking about their fears as well. Stand with your child by encouraging your child. Amen. Lavish them with, the, with words of wisdom and encouragement. Encouragement. While you're encouraging your children, please listen to this. One of them, I don't know what is the most dangerous thing we can do to our children. What is it? I, I believe that the most dangerous thing we can do is to speak negative words into their life. I don't know. I think that is the most dangerous thing we could do. Because words pierce more than a cane. That's what the cane is for, a rod of correction, isn't it? But words destroy. It kills. It weakens. The Bible says, Jesus, the Lord himself said, life and death is in the power of the tongue. The Lord himself said, I speak spirit. The words that I speak to you, they are spirit and they are life. I read an account and it said that when we speak, if you have the right um, mechanism to measure or to take, to stand by the, our mouth and take some recording, it records something, apparently. Because words are tangible. When you spoke, the vapor that comes out of your mouth is tangible. So we've got to be careful what we say to our children. The thing that is why God said the words that I speak, they are spirit and they are life. In the, sometimes it is, in, it is in anger that we say some of the things that we say. Sometimes as mothers we have to bite our tongue. You know? And not say things that you will amount to nothing. And when a child hears that consistently, they then begin to believe it. Psychologically they know. I think my whole mother, who is supposed to know this, brought me into this world, says, I can't amount to that. So me, what else what shall I do? I mean, just live my life anyhow. Words like stupid idiot. Is your child stupid idiot? And I was saying to the first service, your if the teacher, your child's teacher says stupid idiot, you will be at the gates, the school gates, before they open. You will not have it. Like some of us, we get to the school every now and then, you know, to, not to fight, but you know what? You always want to make sure that they know that some parent is looking <laughs> at every step of the way. Not fighting, you just go have a sit down with them and talk. But if they said your daughter is, or son is, you will fly to the place. So why do you say that to your child? You said that because you were angry. But you know the child, whether you are angry or not, they have believed it. And you said it again and again and again. And what is worse is when you add on top of it, your head like somebody I know in this house. <laughs> Minus TBC women in Jesus' name. When that one is not for us ladies, you know, we, we, we ladies, we don't talk like that. You know? You, yesterday, yeah, ladies, anyway. I need to bring my, my, my word to a close. <laughs> we need to show parents that when they leave home, you know that they have a spiritual anchor on which to lean on. Stand with them in the most difficult times. Would it not be very painful? After all the coming and the going, busyness, grabbing here and taking to here and working here, and then after all of that, Listen to Dobson, the guru for family and parenting and, 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 and couples. He said, I have concluded that the accumulation of wealth, even if I could achieve it, 
It means that, you know what, if you think you're accumulating wealth, you really will not be able to accumulate. I mean, how much can you accumulate? The guy has said something here. Say, even if I could achieve it, it's an insufficient reason for living. When I reach the end of my days, a moment or two from now, and that is where we will all be one day, I must look backward on something more meaningful than the pursuit of houses and lands and machines and stocks and bonds. Nor is fame of any lasting benefit. I will consider my earthly existence to have been wasted unless I can recall a loving family, a consistent investment in the lives of my children and other people, and an earnest attempt to serve the God who made me. And he says, nothing else makes sense. Nothing else makes sense. You and I want to finish well. Like Pastor was teaching about finishing well. One of the ways to finish well is not about having all this money and all of that, but finishing towards the end of your, towards the end of your, I mean now, you can look at your children and say, thank you, Lord, that each of my children are in the, in the Lord. This is of benefit than any other thing that we chase. I'm telling you, you will never rest in your grave if any of your children became wayward. One of the scriptures I, I, that scares me is there arose a generation that did not know the Lord. For me, it's one of the most scariest scriptures in the Bible. And the other one is, depart from me, I did not know you. You want to parent with eternity in mind. God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you. It's offering time. Amen. Today, Mother's Day. What an opportunity. Every one of us, we are all here because of the mother who brought us forth. Amen. Every one of us. We have been raised by an auntie, a, 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 a grandmother. Somebody has raised us. Some female personality. Somebody has raised us. And this moment, we want you to on t today being Mother's Day, you want to come to the Lord with a seed of thanksgiving. A special offering saying, Lord, thank you. Thank you that I am where I am because of my mother. Maybe you may have had a terrible experience in the course of your upbringing. You know what? Forgive. Let it go. And still honor the person that carried you. Even if it was for just another nine months, you will have something to thank God for. Thank God that your mother did not abort you. Amen. But that you are living today. Something to sow a seed for. And upon on top of that, our tithes and our offerings unto the Lord. To thank him for giving us the jobs that he has given unto us. Being faithful to that command. We call upon the... Minister Sonny to sing for us for our offering. Thank you. Please, let's pray and um, invite Minister Sonny to come up stage. Father, we thank you. Thank you, Father God, for the opportunity, O oh God, to give towards your work. To thank you for all that you have done for us, O oh God. To thank you, Father God, for the mothers that you gave us, the mothers that raised us, the families through whom we came into the world. It is an opportunity to, for us to thank you for that. And for our tithes and for our offerings, as we bring them before you, we ask the Lord, may these be acceptable in your sight, O oh God. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm going to try the song. Um, when my mommy was preaching, it just fell on my heart and I, I'm going to try it. I'm, is it okay to hold my phone? When I am down and oh my soul so weary When troubles come and my heart's burdens be 
when I am still. 